cranking compression test. It's going to check the mechanical action of the engine. Checks the sealing action of all the valves. It's going to check the sealing action of the rings. Make sure the battery starter and the charging system are good before you attempt to do this test. False failures and wrong compression readings can be the result of a low battery voltage. Be aware. Check it first. Start the engine and allow it to fully warm up. Shut the engine off. Remove one spark plug at a time. This will allow you to find a bad head gasket. Disable the ignition or the fuel. Whatever is easiest. Install a compression gauge. Open the throttle wide open and block it. Crank the engine. A good engine will have two-thirds of the total compression it's going to get on the first cycle. Continue to crank the engine until the needle reaches the fourth bounce. Test all cylinders the same way. Compare the readings to specifications. This is a Chrysler spec. It says gives us a minimum and then gives us a maximum variation. The minimum should be 100 and you can see our gauge is reading a little bit over 120. So we're good there. Then we would compare the variation between cylinders and it can't be higher than 25 percent, Chrysler says. Or if you don't have a spec, you can calculate your own spec by multiplying atmospheric pressure by the engine's compression ratio. And we give you an example there. 14.7 psi times the compression ratio of 9.1 gives us 134 psi. Higher than normal compression can be caused by carbon buildup. So you want to look in the throttle bore and see if you have carbon buildup. All cylinders should be within 10 percent of each other is what MPC thinks. Now the manufacturers as we showed just said 25 and some of them say 30 percent between the highest and low cylinders. We think to have a smooth idling running engine that comes off idle smoothly, the cylinders should be within 10 percent of each other. You will now be returned to the test selection menu. Make a selection based on your test results. 